Hello everyone. So in this video, uh, I'm going to talk about transmission lines. This is a very important topic uh, for uh, engineers. Uh, it's used especially in uh, RF uh, frequencies, high frequencies, uh, like radio frequencies and microwaves. So I can record at most 15 minutes with this uh, program here. So I think I will split this into two or three uh, videos. In this video, we are going to discuss the basics of transmission line and transmission lines. And I want to make this a very precise video. I want to make it very complete and very thorough. So there are no doubts. There are no, uh, not, not many questions uh, that will be left unanswered. So what is a transmission line? A transmission line is simply a cable that will transmit a signal from one place to the other. But usually it's a cable which, um, the, the, its length will depend on the frequency of your signal. If you have a very high frequency signal, a cable which uh, to you may seem uh, short, for example, a 10 centimeter cable, if the frequency of the signal is very high, that will look like a very long cable uh, for the signal. So usually transmission lines uh, will be recognized in the, in the form of a coaxial cable. So if you have a coaxial cable like this, you know that it's a like a cylinder so it's a round cable like this hold on that's not very round so it's a round cable like this and on it has an inner conductor like this which brings uh, the signal so this is the let's call it plus and around this cable there is a ground plane all around it so the ground is outside and the signal goes inside so this is a transmission line uh, the, the the thing with transmission lines is if you take a normal wire normal let's say a normal copper wire like this every wire has an, uh, a, a, a self inductance inductance because if you remember when there is a current on a wire there will be a magnetic field uh, around the wire so if the current is in this direction you use the uh, left hand rule and uh, you find the, the magnetic field. There will be a magnetic field like this in that direction along uh, the wire. So every wire which has current in it will have an inductance. So th this inductance, inductance will affect the signal. But as you can see, there is no capacitance on this wire just by itself. There is negligible capacitance. If you consider gra other signals other wires there that are near if for, for example if you have a ground plane below this wire if this is a PCB and you have a ground plane here then there will be a capacitance between the wire and the ground plane but if the ground plane is very far away and all the other wires are very far away then the capacitance is negligible but this is not the case for a transmission line especially for a coaxial cable like this you have a ground plane all around the signal wire so this is the signal wires in the middle like this and so there's a capacitance everywhere on this uh, on this line here. So how do we model that? A transmission line will be modeled um, by chunks of small impedances. So the model is this. Let me draw the model for you. So we have uh, a resistor like this, and then uh, an inductance. And then in parallel with this, we have another resistor and a capacitor like this. So this is the this is the uh, signal, and this is the ground here. So this line on the bottom here is the ground around, and this line here and the in the and the admittance here in parallel is along with the series impedance here is uh, the signal in the middle here. So this transmission line is made out of chunks like this. So you take this chunk and then you connect it to another one, which is exactly the same. So we just draw it like this. And so the transmission line itself is made out of these chunks here. So, however, these, uh, these parameters here, this resistance, so this is R, this is L, this is G, and this is uh, C. So this r is the resistance per unit length this l is uh, in inductance per unit length this here is conductance per unit length and this here is the susceptance uh, per unit unit length so as you know the 
um, the reactance. Uh, if you if you um, you have a reactance, then one over the reactance is called susceptance. So an impedance. If you have an impedance Z, this is equal to R plus J X. X is the reactance. R is the resistance. Z is the impedance. But you can also write this as Y is equal to one over R plus J X, and this will be equal to any and a uh, conductance plus um let me see how let's see w let's say w so it's equal to a conductance plus a susceptance so this is the reactance this is the resistance this is the impedance this is called admittance which is the inverse of the impedance and the uh, real and imaginary uh, components of the admittance are called conductance and susceptance. So the transmission line itself is made out of these components here. So now there is uh, another parameter which is very important uh, for a transmission line and usually the transmission line is defined by this uh, parameter. This is called the characteristic impedance and we give it the name Z0. So Z0 is called the uh, characteristic impedance of the transmission line and the value of this uh, characteristic impedance is given by the square root square root of the impedance times the admittance. So this the impedance is this pair here R plus J omega L. So this is the this is Z. So this is Z, and this here is Y. So this is Y. So this is the uh, impedance per unit length and this is the admittance uh, per unit length on this here so now we can also write this as z naught is equal to the square root of so we substitute for z which is r plus j omega l and y will be equal to g plus j omega c so j uh, sorry so g is the conductance here and the j omega c is the susceptance, the capacitive susceptance, which is just one over the reactance, the capacitive reactance. So if you remember the reactance for a capacitor is equal to one over j omega c, so this, the susceptance is just the inverse of that. Okay, so now we know that z naught z not is given by this. Now there is another parameter for a transmission line. It can be either lossy, can be a lossy transmission line, or it can be lossless. A lossless transmission line is a tr transmission line that has no uh, resistance or conductance. So it has it does the voltage is not uh, decreased as it travels along the line. So uh, for lossy transmission lines, R and G are non-zero. So let you have you may have heard uh, during your studies uh, that uh, usually coaxial cables will have a uh, characteristic impedance of 50 ohms or 75 ohms or whatever this that is a uh, that is a real value right of the impedance so that's that's a real value it does it does not have uh, a imaginary component where does that come from so that comes from the fact that the r and the g in this formula uh, are zero so why is this because if you take a, a normal um, transmission line a normal coaxial cable the resistance is pretty much negligible uh, the series resistance is pretty much negligible and the parallel resistance, the conductance, which is the leak leakage current from the uh, the center conductor to the ground plane is also negligible because usually the dielectric is very good, the insulator. So if we substitute for R and G equals zero in this formula, we're just left with, um, hold on, the uh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake here. The Z naught is not equal to Z over Y. It's not equal to Z times Y. It's equal to Z over Y. So I apologize uh, about this. So this is not times. This is uh, divided. So this is divided by G plus J omega C. I apologize because there's another parameter on the transmission line, which is Z times Y, which I'll talk about it later. So I confused it with the Z naught. So Z naught is Z over Y, okay? So we just substitute it here. And so if we now uh, substitute for R and G uh, is equal to zero, 
then the result will be just the imaginary part so this is j omega l uh, divided by j omega c and so you see the imaginary parts and the frequency dependence cancel so this will just be equal to l over c and remember that this l and c parameters are uh, inductance and capacitance per unit length so if you have an inductance per unit length of let's say 0 0.01 henrys per meter if you have a cable of one meter it will have a total inductance of uh, one milli henry as you can see here so this is per unit length okay so let's see here so now we know that the um, we now know the basic uh, information about transmission lines and let's see here what else I can talk about um, okay so I have another five minutes and um, I think I will leave it here and just go over into the next video so I'll see you in the next video